we are live. So welcome to our jockey off. This is the fifth off. Um, this is our fifth off. Um, our little anniversary. Um, yeah. So we just so as I introduced, we will just go through the whole project a little bit, project, project management, etc. And um, the slides and both of you, etc., will be available online uh, on Jokerpol. So what is it? Um, um, so we consist out of these modules, Moodle, Jogo, Josie, and Joel, and we run on all these devices. So we are a technology enabler for, um, for these features, audio, graphics, multimedia, computing, processing, um, and each module uh, uh, covers uh, a mapping to the native API, OpenAL, Jogo for OpenGL, and have an impact of AV from multimedia screening and JOCL for OpenCL as well for computer processing. Um, and we run on top of a VM, um, a virtual machine for the CPU abstraction, basic uh, access to operating system features, multi threading, I.O., networking, etc. So, JOC and complements a VM uh, with access to this name functionalities and open APIs. So we emphasize VM here. Um, I haven't put this on the slides yet because, uh, yeah, a little hard. Um, Thirdly, we, we experiment also with LLVM. Um, so I, I had a um, bring up uh, of BlueGen unit test with LLVM that worked quite fine. Um, so we are not necessarily depending on Java. And this is quite important for us um, for the freedom of software. So our software shall run everywhere, meaning we shall not be restricted by the legal implications uh, of our And we run on Android as well, whatever that machine is all about. So the CPU abstraction is clear. Uh, that's what the VM does for us. Um, algorithm, etc. And we have the special functions, feature abstractions for 3D graphics, video acceleration, and audio processing on the hardware, on the CPU, on the controller. Whether this is desktop, mobile, we don't care. We've been doing it for 11 years. So in 2003, we scanned uh, our candidate. I wasn't there. Um, I did GL for Java before. So then later I, I joined it, I don't know, uh, in 2009 or something, 2008, and until now we uh, have our job project. So this is our little tree, you know, the back motive of our t-shirt you have. So here we started on the bottom the inception and all these new features we have. And we run on different VMs and operation systems here. So that's the whole idea. And we are like use case driven by our users, uh, functionality, etc. And we will come to that later. So who does it? Um, so we have core team of developers. So I'm the janitor, and uh, Wade also uh, is one of the janitors uh, uh, here. So we have to do the bug fixing, uh, server administration, uh, coding stuff, and. Um, but most important are our users, so the software developers, we have independent employees, students, we have interest group, research, uh, science, so Jogram is, and Joggle is used for in universities uh, to teach uh, 3D graphics. Um, and product development, of course, companies use it, education, I mentioned. Um, the legal risks of using it, so we have, uh, we are mostly covered by the new BSD license and similar licenses. You may check the uh, license file in our group directory. Um, with Siemens and the Eclipse Foundation, we did a license uh, audit, a uh, legal audit, and we got the green light from, from Siemens. Um, and all our source code is trackable, like whoever committed uh, things, and in the end, if you uh, if we realize or if we get sued by a company, we can actually remove all these pieces uh, written by one author. Uh, so we can 
uh, the cleaning it. We have no vendor risk, it's all open source free software, so there's no end of life risk. You're free to maintain it yourself, sure, costs, time, and money, and source code documentation, debugging security. So for huge projects, uh, you have no black box or anything, right? You have the source code, you can go through uh, everything and interact uh, with us if you have issues. The motivation. Well, this is uh, the freedom of the target platform. You can choose uh, where you want to run. Uh, use a piece of software. You don't have to take care of, of all the platform uh, differences. We uh, anti alias that away. Um, it is uh, interesting uh, from the software perspective, high performance issues, uh, the platform abstractions. Graphics, audio, multimedia, use cases, cross domains, whether it's research, visualization, multimedia, uh, or um, constraints of resources on mobile platforms. And hence, interesting people uh, we meet with uh, with different level of expertise. So, how do we do it? We use free and open tools, Git, a source control management, Maxilla bug tracking, Jenkins build server, Mainlinux forum. Um, Jenkins is used for the unit test coverage, we have public bug reports, and new use cases by our users. So this is uh, our continuous progress, for example, this is uh, the overall build uh, for all our supported target platforms. Uh, so we can monitor, for example, the runtime uh, breakouts and issues here. Um, these are our different machines where we automatically build 64 with 32, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, etc. Uh, and Android. Um, yeah, and different packages for unit tests for testing different functionalities. These are our, um, so now we have run about 1,000 uh, unit tests and we have no uh, performance regression here. So we, like, over time, uh, both the you know, those shapes of the graph matches pretty well. Um, our um, code growth, this is, uh, looks a little bit extreme maybe. Um, so we have 1.2 million lines of code where half a million are almost commands and the rest blank lines. This is Java code and C code. And this is our, uh, these are our commits over time. So this is the time where we, where we were out of uh, order, where we stopped the Joggle project and we moved over to Joggle and then picked up pace. And this is a source, a net source uh, line of code uh, table. So we have, um, so I, I created that because people said, oh, you're growing, you're becoming too monolithic, it's too big. You know? So you need a few numbers to know where you are over time. And, uh, so this is our version 2.0 RC2, this was 2012, early. 2.0.2 was last year, C-Graph, and this is now. So you can see um, uh, for the 2.0.2 uh, version, we added quite a chunk of uh, source code uh, for each module here. And only a little bit, no, I mean, we, we almost had no unit test. So here, this was the first release actually using the heavy unit test. Place. And we added another 45 to 44% around about. So right now we are like 50% covered, or you know, uh, the ratio test to source code is now 45%, which is of course not a real coverage report, uh, more like the shape of uh, source code than test source code. So just, just for a little overview. So who's using that? I mentioned that. Look, please look at the uh, last years of the video. And uh, so we have uh, WordGreen, uh, C3D, uh, and and all the different jams in here. Harvey, Harvey, will you say something about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When it comes um, yeah. And scientific, like molecular folding stuff, research that is nice. We have also. Scilab here, and uh, yeah, materiality, etc. Again, 
last year we went through all of them, which was all explaining actually what Dropbox is all about. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for that. Hi everyone, I'm Harvey Harrison. Um, I'm currently the maintainer of uh, Java 3D. Um, let's see, picked it up out of necessity um, internally. We were using it uh, for our simulation software to visualize everything and uh, having really quite a few bug fixes and it's essentially been abandoned upstream. So around January of 2012, um, have released my port out there and picked up the unreleased 1.6 develop branch and we're currently at uh, 311, we're basically at kind of two regressions left before I'm going to put a final number on it and say that uh, it's someone else's problem. But uh, if things come up, I'm still still looking at them. Uh, so really, the only change I made is uh, removing all the um, native backends that were written in C, um, or DirectX and OpenGL, and rely entirely on the Java project to um, to provide the rendering backend and access to the native APIs. And that um, allowed me to throw away quite a lot of platform dependent code and rely on uh, doing the hard work of keeping it working across um, Windows, OS X, Solaris, uh, Linux, all of those those things. Uh, Java 3 was written as an extension to Swing, so you're not going to find it on Android. But um, if someone was motivated, I'm sure they could tear it out and make it work there. Um, we've kept making sure there's zero API changes, um, and you can use it as a drop-in for the old Jeff 3D if you are relying on it. Um, you shouldn't even have to recompile it, it should be completely API compatible. And um, other than quite a few multi-threading bugs that were uh, uh, causing crashes um, in there, um, the only internal change has been the back end, and if you were a user of Jeff 3D before, you shouldn't notice. Um, some of our users are uh, Sweet Home 3D, um, which is kind of a nice way of doing doing uh, home design and uh, decor to uh, make some nice renderings of uh, what you might want to do in your own house. Um, Vizome is um, there's actually a real world toy called the Zone that are these little um, struts and nodes that you can put together. It's a, it's a nice little geometric uh, toy that you can actually design your own design your own. Boys in, in this school before, before building it if you wish. And um, the Cassini Pro uh, around Saturn actually have planning software written to visualize their passes for the next 24 to 48 hours to actually plan what they want to look at so they can visualize what the satellite will see before they give it new inputs and, uh, and look at things. So it's it's a pretty wide variety of places that Java 3 has, has ended up in. There's, a, there's lots and lots of software in uh, medical imaging and MRI, imaging, archaeology, site uh, visualizations, there's all kinds of places that this ended up that uh, people were kind of stuck because the existing data back in Jav 3D did not support anything past Jav 6 and uh, a lot of the more contemporary versions of OS X, it, it would not work when they went to uh, CA later. <coughs> Construction, visualization, and project control. So mostly, all visually like to control the project, construction projects from A to Z, from inception to the design to the handover. Uh, what is it we need? It's uh, basically a set of integration tools with on top of it a visualization for the model. So we deal with the massive models for the construction sites, for oil and gas, etc. Uh, so we have interactive for the animations, reporting, dynamic 3D and data link, uh, workflow renders, etc. to basically handle everything uh, in the construction lifecycle. And mainly simulations for what is scenarios and like if you want to change the plan, what to do and what will it affect. So a set of tools like from the 3D model, you will be able to communicate with all departments related to the construction sites. So you check the material availability, check uh, the crew, the resources, etc. So why do we use uh, Joggle? Because it's a late flow level API. 
so it allows us to build this uh, rendering engine that depends on low level, there is nothing uh, black box on top of it. So it's uh, very high performance, so it's equal to using OpenGL directly. And the peer separation between graphics pipeline and Windows system. And it's closed platform, so we run on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Mac. So for Android, currently we have the CTD mobile, it's on Android uh, Google Play. So it currently has like 8,000 users. Not all of them are actually using it, they're just giving the demos. But we have like 5,000 actual users on sites that are using uh, the mobile app to visualize the model on the go. So they can visualize the current work they have, the current area they have, and the data associated with all these scan models. Uh, so in the next version of this mobile, it will be, be able, like this upcoming release, they will be able to initiate the proven cycles, edit the data, like progress, progress and send it back to the cloud. Uh, that's it basically. Our website is the intel.com. I'm going to show you this small demo regarding the software. So, this is uh, the model, I you can see it's the model of the Adobe Airport project. It's currently one of the biggest airports being built in the world. So, here you see a simulation of how it's going to be built. So this can be seen in the So this has happened 60 frames per second, this is for the whole project. So and then anytime you can communicate with the model, check data related to the object, you change the model. How large a model is, uh, is that? Sorry? Which is the size of the model? I don't know. Uh, the model? As a, yeah. Uh, number of triangles or objects? Or? Number of triangles. I say, Target is to eliminate paper, so we're not there yet because it's a change of mentality as well. So we have the old guys to change, like accept to use only software except of paper because everybody likes to sign. Question: How do you go from the CAD drawings to to your software? How do you, what's your pipeline look like there? Uh, from the authoring tools like AutoCAD. Uh, yeah. Bentley, we have uh, converters that on top of them with partnerships. Uh, and so for some formats like standard formats, IFC, IFC 96 for piping, uh, we do we need to buy it. So. What's your, and what do you use? Actually, do the conversion, what do you end up with? Do you end up with Colada or? No, no, we or? Uh, CSG, like constructive solid geometry. Yeah, okay. So it's like one to one with the original data because some, in some cases we need to transfer back to the design. So in the software, like they see a wall that has, for example, it needs to be there's a window inside it, but it's not drawn. So some user will just plug in, cut the wall, and send it back to the design, and then to go to the approval site. So you can run through your files. Yeah. Uh, would Jogo be supported on iOS? Jogo be supported on iOS? Yeah. Mm, that's... That's... Let me contemplate a bit. Go to 
So that was the demo show. We have uh, two demos left at the end. Um, now we walk through the components. Um, so you had a question so far? So this is now one side of Nugent, because Nugent is often neglected, gets no law, has not even a logo. And, uh, but it is a core part, right? We, we put, it's a compiler. We, from the C header file, we create the C function. For C function, C structs, we create the Java and native group code. Um, JNI group code. So, you have different choices today if you want to produce native code with Java, which is uh, like there's JNI, JNA, which does it at runtime. Um, it lacks deterministic, deterministic secure approach for some opinions, and here you have everything in compile time and you can verify the code afterwards. Uh, hence, it's also a little bit faster. You could also, the, the previous mentioned LLVM. Um, so LLVM can load code and the, the, the bigger goal of LLVM and VMKit is actually to use any code and mix, it, mix and match it together at runtime and then to compile it down to the target level. So this is one of our thingy we are working on which is also addressing the Apple iOS uh, later on. So this will be a pass for iOS as well to enable job. She asked a question, right? right now. <laughs> so she just got it. <laughs> and uh, right, and then we have the runtime tools in Nugent. Um, so the native job, locating and loading. Um, so previously we had this web start stuff and we were relying on, on, on some things within Java. Um, since this is not really working across platforms and whatever, uh, we, we created our own solution to locate native jars from the Java jar file, base URL, we derive it, or now we can also hook it into the class pass and, and find a, a token, let's say, for the native libraries, which is not recommended for performance reasons, however it's possible. Uh, blue code utilities for determining uh, bit sizes, integer sizes, etc., and concurrency IO helpers, etc. So that is huge. Um, yeah, you can query the native platform. Then we have JoCL, and this is uh, so wait. Uh, uh, came, uh, so he jumped in and uh, picked up the maintenance, and he also aligned the build system. Uh, how we started, then Ray came in, and so in the end, now we have aligned with the, the, the JoCL build system. Before we had NetBeans template which was not maintainable. Now, we, for all of our money, we use the same and stuff. Uh, and then we could add uh, Android support, for example. Um, well, I haven't really played with it, but I can bring up the JoCL, OpenCL version information on Android, and so that's enough for me, right? So whoever wants to use OpenCL can use Docker on selected devices where you have the native drivers. So in our bug report, we have a list of devices which should work with Android. Uh, on one Nexus, I tried and it worked. So, um, so goal is to have the zero failures and OPCL 1.0 and 1.1 one, one way. Yeah, yeah. Windows 1.2 as well. 1.2 as well. Okay. Yeah, so we're two. waiting on 2.0 until they have yeah. these drivers that are good. Uh, right. So 1.2 as well, no new features otherwise. Um, yeah, so there's not much, uh, you know, not much going on okay, compared to OpenGL. You see, yeah, you know, you want to print things, you want to, you come to other features. You want more managed code for the user, so it's easier to use OpenGL. Uh, for OpenCL, this is not so much like it's just low level, and you probably want to start a new project using JoCL to make it more easy to use. Okay, so then we have open. No questions. Then we have uh, our OpenAL mapping, JoAL. Not much to say here, too. It's quite stable. Um, it's, uh, it provides spatial sound, a little audio, buffering, streaming, etc., mixing of streams. And we provide OpenAL soft, open soft on all platforms now, so we built that. And so you have 5.1 sound uh, on all platforms, and it's the most reliable solution uh, 
to have some. Uh, before we were using, we were trying to use the, the, the system uh, OpenAL library, but that was not so was not working so well. It's also working on Android, so that's nice. Yeah. And then toggle. So we can go through this. So we have the OpenGL profiles. Um, I don't know whether it's new for you. So it's, let's make it quick. We have the uh, the old Git function pipeline here. So this is uh, um, <laughs> to say retarded. No, this is uh, deprecated. This is a deprecated one. And uh, yeah. And, and here you have the new way. Meaning the fixed function pipeline is always implemented in software. So you should better target the core OpenGL profiles uh, to benefit from uh, hardware acceleration, of course. And I guess. In a few days, they, they offer another core core, you know, and then they talk about Manpool and whatever. But at least this is these uh, com these common profiles we have. Let's say we call it here GL2, my class. So GL2, ES2, or GL, GL2, uh, GL3, ES3. So we have these common profiles, and you can select them. Then you only have the API available in that class. Uh, for this profile, and you can be sure, yes, your program will, uh, probably will run on all these devices, mobile, desktop, etc., without a change. Of course, you can tweak your code, your algorithm, you can query, oh, we have a GL4 core profile, so let's put in some tessellation data or instancing, etc. But you can plug and play these features, and your application can still be platform neutral. Right. And this is emphasis on the programmable shader. So our pass is uh, we have you have a profile, you create your request capabilities with the profile, and then this is all hooked together with the graphics configuration. Because if you create a surface, a drawable um, with Jargo, um the OGL contact is bound to a graphics device to a surface, then associated with the surface later on. Uh, so we indeed map like in X11 networking screens uh, in displays so you can create uh, surfaces context for let's say display server column one or something right? on windows is all doesn't matter um, so we talked about surfaces so we have to abstract the surface to, to provide a common uh, a common API uh, the common API is the native surface, so that is the uh, downstream uh, API, immutable, and you have the native window API, immutable, meaning you can resize something. So this is implemented by UTE, it's our own uh, API, AWT, SWT, Android, etc., etc. And so the native surface, the information, the window handle, surface handle, this is like map on X11, GDI, Windows, Android, Coco. And that is connected through OpenGL, to OpenGL, through these OpenGL layers, right? GLX, Wiggle, VGL, etc. So this is how we abstract all the platform specifics away from you, and you have managed code, and you don't need to worry about it. So we talked about new, so new further extract the input events, I mean, you know that from AWK. So keyboard pointer, output events, currently only monitor events. Um, you can create them, you have parenting uh, functionality, so like what you saw in, in Rami's C3D demo, is an AWT swing monster, and then you hook in a new window with native parenting, and you benefit from the new features where um, where you have off-thread event polling, and you have a dedicated event uh, 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 thread for uh, OpenGL yeah. rendering. You can have an exclusive uh, renderer context, so you don't need to switch the OpenGL yeah. context, etc. So here are a few pictures from how we how you can target different monitors, spanning. Yeah. About the input devices, uh, is it possible to use more exotic ones like touch screens or uh, 
Oh yeah, we have mouse. Yeah, the touch screens they are already working. Uh, so the touch screen interface is just like a pointer. So historically we called it mouse event. Now in the documentation we mentioned it is just a historical name. We call it pointer event. And the pointer event allows. I have prepared this. Let's see if it works. Yes. So so yes, it works, right? One finger, two fingers, and here, for example, we have gestures, uh, gestures implemented. So the two finger score, you see there. So so this is now built in into new, so that you have the scroll wheel, the same semantics as a scroll wheel and stuff. You can disable that. <laughs> Rami doesn't like it, <laughs> but uh, that's just so. So we have uh, guest gesture detection right? and, and, and things like that. So you can plug that in, um, and you have all the pointer elements. So this is uh, following the W3C specs for pointer elements. So this is commented in our mouse event class. Yeah, you see it. And, uh, and the same thing works for the Windows. Yeah, Windows 8 surface works. and. Now I added a few slides for for low level OpenGL stuff, not that low level, so it still uses an auto drawable. So that is managed code where you can hook up your GL event listener. And um, so some auto drawable implementations implement shared context setter, uh, which shall ensure that uh, your lifecycle complete. So you have your master and your slave uh, context. Um, we use um, we, we use off-thread off, uh, off OpenGL text, like texture loading for our GL media player. We'll show this later. So we have a dedicated thread decoding video and pushing the bits to the texture, and another thread actually playing the movie. And you can have many other, uh, or you want to isolate the context states if you have, especially for fixed function pattern. So you might want to use a shared context. So using these functions, that they were actually created by request from, from the Worldwind guys um, yeah, to have something working like uh, don't create the slave context before the master context is created and um, uh, don't, you cannot destroy the master context until the slave context is created etc. So using the, this API makes it uh, lifecycle complete and gives you a guaranteed uh, order of creation and destruction. Um, then we have uh, uh, GL context free association. So this is now heavily used for a few uh, use cases. Um, that means we have uh, the, the association of a GL context and a surface, and you may want to switch that, like on screen, off screen, uh, including all the uh, event listeners. So we want to swap the context with the event listeners to a different surface. The use cases are context preservation. Um, let's say on Android, you temporarily might lose the surface. Uh, that's where we pull out the context. The surface can be destroyed, and we can reattach it. Important here, if you have a loose context, don't use it. Right? So this is built in into, into our new window for Android. Um, furthermore, swapping on and off screen. So we use it for high DPI printing. If you have an on-screen uh, auto drawable and you want high DPI, so you know instead of 100 DPI, 300 DPI, then you create an off-screen surface FBO frame buffer object and attach it and swap the context with the event listener, and then you are good to go. And also we use it for OSX, CLA, and the native mute window swapping. So if you have an AWT um, auto drawable and uh, you attach, have native parenting, like the new window, you attach it to the AWT, then you must use the OS XCA layer, um, because it's in the hierarchy, it's, it's all off-screen render. Uh, and, but if you want to pull it out and have a main window, a top-level window, then we swap that to a native NS window, NS surface, etc. 
No questions? Yo. We solved a big leak also. So we had uh, for, for memory mapping uh, and keeping a memory map instance alive, uh, there was a huge uh, map leak uh, which has been solved. And now the, uh, the map object, the GL buffer storage, is exposed to the public. Um, so, so many tracking objects actually, like objects we track, we expose it, so you don't need to query that state explicitly through native OpenGL, which slow downs your application, right, the, the OpenGL rendering, because usually it forces a synchronization, flush, etc. That makes everything slow. <coughs> um, so here you can query uh, the bound uh, buffer object and then receive the buffer storage and get the size and the name. And identity, but, but you can also get the map buffer and IO buffer. So if you use map buffer with what would you know? Um, there you go. Uh, any questions? Then we have high API support. So there was an API change. We introduced uh, the notion of surface uh, dimension. Uh, which is now a pixel unit. Um, before we had we had only something like get width, get height, and um, which was a pixel unit. And now this is in magic window units, undetermined. Um, the mapping is done via the so-called scalable surface, and then we can define pixel scale. So this was initially done for OS X to support the high DPI uh, surfaces uh, uh, displays and but it's intended of course to support other devices as well uh, we just haven't found a use case yet um, so by default uh, we use the highest DPI if you want a lower DPI uh, setting then you need to call the surface scale and set a different pixel scale for the width and the height so, the magic values are documented here. So that is the high DPI support. Good. And we have stereo Spooky. So we have uh, we support um, the, the user request was to support Oculus VR. Yeah, because you know, not nice passport. So we went to enhance blue gen for this uh, to properly map uh, the, the Oculus uh, VR SDK down with Nugen to have all the native mapping properly. That worked well. On top of that, we created a whole little API stack, a factory for, for stereo device. Stereo device will uh, provide you a stereo device renderer, implementing specific renderer methods for, this, for each stereo device. Um, and then you have, a, have your client renderer and your client renderer, so we have one implementation for that, uses that stereo device renderer. Um, currently we have the correct asymmetric field of view rendering of axis, so that is working with the Oculus device, but we also have generic uh, software uh, implementations, mono, side by side, and side by side with lens distortion. And the letter here is, of course, equal with Oculus VR. Um, you know, we'll show you that. So this is side by side. This also works with uh, with videos. So you just later you will see a little demo showing a 3D video. And this is with lens distortion. So here for the lens for the software lens distortion, um, uh, they create like this was a DK1, they, they, they create a, a mesh for that, um, uh, helping to distort the, the, uh, uh, the, the 2D image, so that you have huge textures which are distorted uh, uh, to compensate the lens distortion, and um, yeah. so that code, that data I, I took out of the, of the source kit, so hence it is not included in Joggle, it is included in our Oculus jar file, and the license implications are defined uh, 
explain that. So this is a little, uh, you have a factory, you, you create a device, uh, you create your um, field of view, or you use a default. Um, you get uh, requested distortion bits. Um, you get your device renderer from the stereo device here. Um, you can pass your desired texture filter. You get you create a client renderer with a stereo device renderer. And then you simply add your demo code. The demo code is a stereo, no, is a stereo GL event listener. So it adds up a few more methods we need, like for each eye, render something for each eye. And hook up that renderer to your mute uh, window and GL auto drawable visible color. So for the uh, integration, 3D integration, it's quite simple. So what we hope is that more people will use this API and add more more uh, stereo rendering modes, like not side by side, you know, picture after picture, etc. And let's implement this for other stereo TVs, etc. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I could show this demo now, but I'm a little scared that I, I just continue through and make the demos in the end, okay? Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. Mentioned the uh, media player. You see a demo of his movies later. Um, good. Then we have the graph API. Um, we talked about this uh, in the last two years. Um, so this is the uh, um, independent curve rendering API based on Rami's uh, paper, Resolution Independent Nerves Curve, uh, which is not loop in, patent free, etc. So the whole purpose is to render these things, these curves, with a GPU, uh, like every time, at every zoom level, etc., all the time. So nothing is texture, cache, etc. Um, right, that's resolution independent. Rendering, text, UI, whatever. It's fast. We like to have a seamless integration to the renderer. This is still a work in progress. And the user interface. I'll show you a little demo. The back end, um, we, uh, like the, the enhancements, is uh, now we are able to catch outline shapes uh, and place them later on arbitrary using 2D transforms on the screen. This allows us to take glyphs and, and cache them and put them in different sizes and, and locations. So it's very fast text rendering. Um, we have different renderer now, single multicolor texture and a texture sequence. Our movie player is a texture sequence, for example, the GeoMedia media player. Different anti-aliasing modes, like you need anti-aliasing because um, we'll show you later, uh, only at 300 dpi you will, you will really have the retina effect. So on the OS X MacBook with 210 dpi's, it's not, you know, it's not good enough. So you still need anti-aliasing. Um, so we have U-based anti-aliasing, brute force, oops, and flip cut mode, etc., and MSAA mode. So the best one for everything under 300 dpi is BBAA two times or four times over some. And we have the automatic shader selection, uh, depending on uh, what thing we actually render, one color, texture sequences, and the anti-aliasing modes, so the user does not need to care about that. So this is a back end, and you can like sim similar to AWT with their with their uh, curves or, or path to D, right? The path to the API, you can just push all your your curves into our API and render it. This is uh, done with our text renderer, which caches glyph, so it has some. But, but basically, our text renderer is just reading the true type fonts and pushing the curves into our data structure and renders it. Yeah, we have a graphical demo, uh, demo code, meaning not really a stable API, so it's still a working process, sorry, no time. Now we have the selection by intersection, properly, not false color, prep. Um, we propagate mouse coordinates 
uh, in graph to graph coordinates. Um, we have we can mix and match different renderers, colors, textures, and we have like buttons for uh, um, context frame buffer sharing, media texture sequence sharing. You see that in the dev. Um, yeah. see here if I remove the sample size to up to one so there's no anti-aliasing now so the signal clearly the, the uh, what do we have here it's infinity yeah. great it must have been something to do with the monitor connection um, so we render this TPI dependent um, that's why you don't see the text here or something uh, sorry about that um, so the, the curve signal, uh, you know, the high frequency signal, of course, is not mapped to the low DPI value, 100, of course. So we need to, to add this uh, a multi sampling here. So with, with four oversampling, like we are, we are fine. And here we can match brute force and flip, quite, for example, algorithm. Yeah. So this is what you get. And Oh, well, at least here our, our gear is running in a button, right? So this is like an hour API running with a shared context, frame buffer, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Good. And then we have a demo posterior rendering. So our so this is our mono renderer, right? And and then we have side by side stereo. And then we have the lens effect. You saw the screenshots. Repository, we only update our major releases. And 
Now we talk about the, the typical Java file, native Java file uh, location, which I derived from its Java URL I mentioned it earlier, uh, without utilizing the class pass for performance reasons. But now we have added a fallback mechanism that we can add them, plug it into the class pass, and based on the runtime information, we, we also try to look into the class pass whether that native Java file can be located. So we put a little cookie into the native Java files and find that. Um, but this is not recommended, but people request it. So we have it. As a, and hence, now you can use Gradle because one of Gradle's requirements is that different packages are in their own location. And uh, your Mark cleaned everything up. Everything should be working now, even the atomic packages which were missing earlier. Say that you depended only on the JVM, so um, you talked about Scala. I wonder, is anyone actually using Scala with uh, Scala? Yeah, we had a few sugar. people testing with it. Well, that works. Yeah. It's just a back end, another or front end, front end for the, for the JVM. So, never tried it, but people said, yeah, it's working. Good for me. <laughs> but by the way, the, the LLVM problem, uh, I could not load Jogo with OpenGL. I tried it with uh, Mesa and NVIDIA drivers because we had a collision with the LLVM library, runtime library, uh, using per hour LLVM VM kit and within the OpenGL driver. So, <laughs> so they were colliding and I could not load the LibGL library. So the OpenGL stuff worked fine and we will have to work on that. Uh, LLVM, VM kit. Uh, yeah. But, also. Okay. Do you uh, have an Oculus in the uh, Friday series? Yeah, I only have one output. That's why, yeah, you can, we can play. Yeah. How, how extensive is the new gesture support? You know, uh, multi touch and stuff. You know, what kind of gestures are supported on what platform? Oh, well, we just, like the API is just a path through of events. So, uh, and uh, we have a gesture interface you can extend. You can create your own gestures if you derive from it. You can, you can plug in a gesture listener. And like first you have a detector and add your listener to it. So you're producing, of course, your own gestures, then okay? custom gestures, and then you can pass them as you wish. Uh, so you get all possible events natively delivered to you. It's yeah. um, performance-wise, yeah, it's, I don't see it. Right? I mean, that was Rami's concern. Let's say on Android, uh, do we have performance issues or anything? But since we decouple uh, event handling and rendering, it's not a big issue. Do you have any ben yep. any, oh. any benchmark about? Uh, uh, Comparison between uh, the um, uh, between Jugal uh, and uh, native uh, app. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe in the past we did that once. This was Ken too. We like we used Jake too and, and other uh, demos. Um, so our conclusion was even by then I don't know. It's, it's like we are CPU bottleneck. And and now I mean and that was in the day of the fixed function type. So now we use a core. Usually we use core OGL, so we have just a few calls each frame. Um, so it's less overhead for the JNI. So that is our overhead. Like we just call. We have to go to the JNI bridge. Uh, that's all. Other than that, yeah. It's not noticeable. The person that earlier asked about 
our iOS support. What was the answer for that? I didn't quite catch that. Okay, so the answer is well, that's my personal thing, so I like to use LLVM, VM kit. Uh, there's another uh, uh, product, a uh, robot VM. Um, they, they are contraire, like robot VM is like a product already, but, it, but in the discussion it seems that robot VM's garbage collection and other t uh, and, and log, native logging, etc. is not state of the art. Well, the VM kit is not productized yet. I mentioned it's more research, but based on that research, uh, we have many papers available, and they use state of the art garbage collection and locking mechanisms. Um, and my first experience with Gugen again was that I could load all native, our native libraries, and it was just perfect. So I didn't need to do anything. It was great. So. Um, it just needs commitment to make it a stable uh, product. And now the hope is also that the GCC uh, compiler collection, they are huddling up this LLVM, and so they're all working on this. So, I mean, it, it's a bigger goal for everybody to have a virtual machine now and uh, to compile um, everything on the dedicated target platform when you have it on your target platform, because only then you can optimize this code for that specific processor. Maybe you remember you have a Linux distribution for just generic x86, 64-bit or whatever, but if you have a Pentium 4M or, you know, all this stuff, and, but on the platform, the, the, the VM uh, can compile a uh, test. And, and also use what's more technology, and, you know, runtime optimization. So, yeah. So that's the target. And it frees us from the or and it's like the low battery indicators flashing, you only get swapped into the battery. Yep. Yeah. We're mapping there for port 3 and ES3.0. So we're a little behind schedule. <laughs> usually, usually at every C graph we have the last year's uh, spec. <laughs> so this is, so we're a little late, but that will come up. Um, yeah, reasons were there was not really a big benefit yet, at least for our clients. Um, so it needs a little bit community push. And maybe use cases also, that would be nice. Um, so what we do is Baxilla, etc. First, our first level is usually the forum communication, and in the forum we ask for a Baxilla report, and the perfect report, of course, is uh, to have a git pull request with a unit test and everything, uh, which fails because the feature is not there yet. And uh, so that, that would be the perfect thing. These work for us, right? And maybe people start to implement those features themselves and over there. That would be top notch. But, yeah. so within the next month, we will, of course, uh, update. I mean, it's a good chance now, now we can skip to 4.5 already. <laughs> and whatever it is, uh, is now, I guess, 3.1, 3.2. Yeah, 3.2 next year, uh, mobile world or something. Easy. Question three. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, since this is a, a small group, I was wondering if you could introduce some of the, the different user groups here. Like we're the group from the the, the, the Johnson project. Mm -hmm. uh, are there other project team members in the room here that we Okay, this is Jamson from Osenko, Harvey, uh, Harry and Matt. Matt. And this is MathWorks. Paul and Mark. <laughs> yeah, my love guys. Ah uh, no, not me. Oh, not us. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. And this is Wade. He's a. Uh, we will. Uh, he's not determined yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a guy that uses Google. I used to use it at work, but I don't anymore. But I kind of. I still use it for my home projects. So I do a little maintenance on it here and there. Uh. And this is Rami from C3P, uh, and he does uh, uh, the CAD and etc. The demo you saw. Anybody else? Anybody else work? Uh, we use Java for uh, 3D engine. 
furniture design software. It's, it's called ICE. It's based on Calendar. Yeah. I never, I never, never heard of that. Uh, have we referenced that on our journal page? No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can say hello. And, yeah. Nice screenshot or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the dinner, right? The dinner, <laughs> if you like. And uh, I guess I will show the Oculus stuff, and you can play with the Oculus and watch all of that. And uh, well, is that fine? Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.